Welcome back to Smug and Play Explains, and we're on part two of our resource management series. If you haven't seen part one, I really recommend that you go back and watch that before continuing on. And in this part, we're going to talk about how to deal with IRQ conflicts on late 90s and early aughts PCs. And as covered in part one, even if you can do IRQ sharing, it may cause performance issues, it may cause driver bugs. You really don't want to do that. And I'm going to talk, you know, in particular about how to deal with it on certain operating systems and BIOSes. So operating systems we're going to talk about are DOS, Windows 9X, which is Windows 95, 98, and ME, and then Windows XP and 2000. Then we're also going to talk about specific BIOSes. Two kinds of BIOSes primarily. One is the legacy PNP, or it's also called APM BIOS, which are in early Windows 95 era machines. And then I'm also going to talk about ACPI, which was introduced in the late 90s, um, really became the standard, the gold standard in like early aughts. So first I'm going to focus on these OSs and their different philosophies of how they deal with interrupt conflicts. The DOS philosophy is that there's no room for error. If you have any kind of conflict, there's going to be problems. You know, when you boot up your system, it probably will show in the BIOS the IRQs that it's assigned. Any case where you see duplicates, you might have problems. So on my ABID BP6, I have my USB controller and my sound card on IRQ12. I also see my uh, Firewire controller and my Autogy card share with the display controller. Fortunately, I don't use the FireWire port. And then I have my IDE controllers on the same IRQ. Fortunately, they kind of know how to deal with each other, so it's not a problem. But I do face problems because of the first one with my USB and sound card being on the same IRQ, because when I play Duke Nukem, for example, in real mode DOS, and I have my USB keyboard plugged in, my controls go insane. Basically, my sound is now... <laughs> Uh, controlling my keyboard entirely, and it becomes a mess. Fortunately, I don't have this problem at all when I'm playing this in Windows 98 DOS mode, for example, because it handles the interrupt conflicts. Now, Windows 9X, of course, as we know, it supports IRQ sharing, uh, but they also had more technology that they introduced. So as of Windows 95 OSR2, they support IRQ steering, and basically this allows the Windows operating system to override the BIOS in cases where it can see that there's already an ISO card on one IRQ and can move the PCI card somewhere else. And this kind of goes to this philosophy that Microsoft knows best because that's how they felt in the late 90s. And so, you know, as I said, IRQ sharing is better than crashing, but there can be problems. Now, Windows XP in 2000 have a completely different philosophy. They decided that overriding the BIOS was a bad idea and it's not recommended. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't do it. In fact, we're going to cover ways to do it. But the saving grace is that Windows XP has a much better ACPI implementation, and ACPI actually supports an extra eight IRQs. This is my same system that I displayed the BIOS from, and you can see that all the cards have been now moved to their own IRQ with the exception of the uh, Ultra DMA controller. You know, enough details, like, that's great, but what do I do? And I'm kind of showing you here in Windows 98, how do you show your IRQs? Once you're in Device Manager, you click Properties on the computer, and you can see all the IRQs shown to you and find any conflicts. What do you do about it? That depends on your system. And so if you have ACPI enabled in your BIOS, you have a problem because you can't change what the BIOS configures. In this situation, you really only have a few options. Uh, the first option, which sounds very primitive, but is quite effective is to move PCI cards. And the reason this works is that uh, the address lines are shifted down for each one of your PCI cards. You can also disable a device in Windows if you're only using Windows and you don't need something like a FireWire port. Or you can disable ACPI and that will give you manual configuration. Now the downside is you're turning off modern power management. So there's a cost to doing this and I would consider this sort of a last resort. And there are a few notes, though, before you go about doing that. One is it's a BIOS option. You have to have that option. Some OEM boards might not let you, and then you're just stuck. And then you have to think about your operating system and how it's going to handle that. On Windows 98, for example, you need to change your registry key before you change the setting. On Windows XP, you actually have to reinstall your operating system if you turn ACPI on or off. And there are people who can tell you that you can get around it in various ways, but I don't really trust that. I think you'll more likely break your, your installation anyway. Now, once you have ACPI off, what are you going to do? 
Now, you can often change in the BIOS the IRQs which are assigned to each PCI slot. So you can set an unused IRQ, and you might have to play with this because you might not know which one's PCI 1 or PCI 2 or PCI 3. Often the AGP card is PCI 1. You can also do this in Windows, and it'll affect it when you're running Windows. You can do this by double-clicking on the card in Device Manager, select the Resources tab, then uncheck the Use Automatic Settings button, which is always scary, but then it'll let you go and change the IRQ settings. So what do we learn? In summary, you can't use IRQ sharing in DOS. Sometimes you can in Windows, but it may lead to problems. If ACPI is on, no manual configuration is going to work. You're going to want to try moving PCI cards, and you might want to try using Windows XP if the games you want to play support that, because Windows XP will give you 24 IRQs to play with. If none of those things work for you, you can disable ACPI. This often works well in combination with disabling your serial ports and parallel ports. Then you can move all the cards you want to IRQs 3 to 5 and 7. Thank you very much for watching this show. Uh, please like the video and please subscribe to watch more Smug and Play content. Thank you. Bye.